On March 8, 1869, the first locomotive came into Ogden as Union Pacific was building its rails towards Promontory. And on that date, practically the whole town, which was around 2,500 people, turned out to see this event. It was quite a, uh, an event for the community. The train first came through Ogden on March 8th and proceeded on up through the town of Corinne and then out to the summit of Promontory. Meanwhile, back in Ogden, the first transcontinental passenger trains were beginning to move in. They could come at least as far as Ogden and deposit passengers. Some stayed here in Ogden and uh, bought homesteads and, and became citizens. Others took uh, wagons and went down to Salt Lake City to live in that area. It wasn't long after the Golden Spike had been driven and uh, transcontinental traffic began, both east and west, that Ogden became a junction of the railroads. And by being a junction, that meant that the uh, Central Pacific from the uh, west and the Union Pacific from the east met here. And passengers would often have to get off one train and get on another train to proceed on. As this kind of traffic, both freight and passenger, developed, Ogden developed. And it exploded in both numbers of people and uh, in commerce. We are currently inside the Utah State Railroad Museum, which is housed inside the Ogden Union Station. After the Golden Spike was driven, there was a debate as to where the two railroads would have a commercial connection with each other. The city of Corinne, about 30 miles north of Ogden, was one of the last what they called hell on wheels towns. As the railroad built, small communities would uh, start up and they would be mostly populated by prostitutes and gamblers and uh, outlaws, and of course railroad workers. They were kind of oases, but they were called hell on wheels town. And Ogden was not one of those because it already was an established community. But Corinne was, was one of the last uh, camps before the railroads joined at Promontory a short distance away, became so notorious that Brigham Young uh, discouraged his people, his Mormons, from even coming near the place. Brigham Young began building the Utah Northern Railroad and that proceeded past Ogden and went north into Idaho and Montana. That eliminated the commercial routes that Corinne was relying on to become a center of commerce. The railroads agreed then that Ogden would become their official junction. So Ogden became the point at which the two railroads met and exchanged passengers and freight. This is the uh, time schedule for the various trains that would come through Ogden. And uh, you can see by the uh, designation SP or UP, the two railroads that serviced this town. The SPs would be coming from San Francisco into Ogden. The UPs would be coming from Omaha and Chicago. There were also trains that went north, Seattle, Portland, Oregon. West Yellowstone was a resort built by the Union Pacific Railroad. And so they had a train that went from here up to uh, Yellowstone. During the 30s and 40s was the height, the heyday of passenger traffic in Ogden. This station uh, was a dynamo uh, during those period of time. During World War II, Hundreds of trains came through here every day with troops and materiel heading for the uh, war zones. Now in the 1930s, the uh, Ogden Chamber of Commerce developed this wonderful logo which says you can't get anywhere without coming to Ogden. And the spokes of this wheel indicate the rail lines and the destinations that one could get to starting in Ogden. 
The reason that this became a museum and not a train station was that Amtrak ceased operations uh, through the station. Uh, the last passenger train that operated through Ogden was in 1997. And that train then ceased operation and there was no longer any passenger service at the station. So it had ceased to uh, have a purpose as a uh, commercial depot. So people got together, uh, committees were formed, a foundation was formed, and uh, the railroad museum was established. From 2,500 people to well over 50,000 in Ogden proper, the railroads were largely responsible for this growth. Ogden would not be Ogden as we know it without the railroad. The people that it brought in changed its character from a sleepy Mormon community to a cosmopolitan demographic. People from all over the world settled here and they wouldn't have got here to Ogden unless the railroads were here.